This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Uh, this lecture is on the chapter in the free lecture notes on interpretation of financial statements, or as you'll see, financial ratios. Uh, and what it is, we've been through the financial statements, and the main statements, of course, are the statement of financial position and the statement of profit or loss. Uh, and users, you know, shareholders and other people who are interested in them, they'll be looking at them to see how well the business is doing. Is it doing better? Is it doing worse? And so on. And so there are various things uh, we might look at when we look at these statements, when we interpret them, to decide uh, where are we doing well or perhaps where are we doing badly. And as you'll see, there are three areas that we look at. Obviously, we're interested in profitability. I think that's the, the thing most people will look at first. Are we making more profit? Are we making less profit? Are we doing better or worse in that sense? And as you'll see, there are various things we might look at to measure profitability. We're all, also interested in what we call liquidity. Uh, liquidity is how well, how easily can the company pay its bills in the short term? You know, they may be making lots of profit, but if they're running out of cash, they could have big problems uh, if, if they can't pay the bills. That's liquidity, and as you'll see, there are various things we might look at there. Uh, and finally, something called gearing, uh, which, as you'll see, is, is looking at how a company has raised its money. Uh, if a company needs money, they can issue shares, or they could have long-term borrowing. Well, uh, a few measures we might look at there. And so to show you what I mean, and um, to go through the various measures, um, can you look at the example, example one, where I've given you the statements of financial position, 2010 and the previous year, 2009, and it all looks fairly normal, non-current assets, current assets, inventory receivables, cash and so on. And I've also given you the statements of profit and loss for the two years. The year ended June 2010 and the previous year, 2009. And we're going to look at the various ratios you could be asked for each of profitability, liquidity and gearing. And it's very much a question of learning them, but also uh, understanding what the relevance is. So first of all, let's look at the profitability ratios. Now, I've actually given the what you might call the formulae on the next page. Uh, but don't just learn a formula, do see, do understand the relevance of them and what figures we're using. Uh, we want to make more profit. The reason we look at ratios, you see, it's no good just looking at the final profit and saying, oh, profit after tax 1147, last year 637, it's a lot more, we've done a lot better. It's no good just looking at the absolute profit. Uh, because the company's a lot bigger. Look at the statements of financial position. Last year, uh, the non-current assets, for instance, were only 1982. Uh, the total um, equity and liabilities, 6011. But this year, the figures are a lot higher. The company's bigger. And of course, if the company's bigger, we'll be expecting more profit. Uh, if all we've done was make one dollar extra profit, I hardly think that's very good. You know, if the companies become twice as big, you need at least twice as much profit to be doing as well. And so we look at ratios. And the most important one of all, the first one is the return on capital employed. And it's pointless me writing down all the formulae. You have the next page in front of you. It's more important to explain what figures we're using and where they come from. But you'll see, we take the profit before interest and tax. 
And so for 2010, uh, the profit before interest and tax is the profit from operations. Now, if you look at 2010, profit from operations is 1896. They've then subtracted finance costs, which is another word for interest, and got 1776. Then they've subtracted the tax, 629. Well, we always look here at the profit before interest and tax or the profit from operations. And the reason is, we're trying to see how well the managers are actually running the business. Um, tax isn't something they can control. You know, if the state puts up the tax rate, we pay more tax. It's not the manager's fault. And also, as far as interest is concerned, well, I want to know how much profit they're making on all the money that's invested in the business. Whether the money's come from shareholders, or we're having to pay them dividends, or whether the money's coming from long-term borrowing, and we're having to pay them interest. So we take the profit before interest and tax, and we express it as a percentage of the total long-term money in the business. And what I mean by the long-term money in the business, again in 2010, the long-term money they've raised the long-term money invested, is um, the share capital and reserves, the money from shareholders, 5255, plus uh, the long-term borrowing, the non-current liabilities, 1200. That's the total money invested in the business. What percentage profit is it giving? Well, 1896 divided by the total of those two is uh, 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 6455. As a percentage, I get 29.4%. Uh, now, of course, I can't say whether that's good or bad. You know, it depends so much on the type of the business. And you'll see that this is the same for most of the ratios we're going to look at. You can't say 29% is good or bad. You need to compare it. We'd either compare with similar companies. If similar companies were only giving 20%, we're doing rather well. If similar companies are giving 40%, then we're doing rather badly. You'll either compare with similar companies or with the previous year. And here we do know the figures from the previous year. Last year, the profit before interest and tax, profit from operations, was only 11.08. Uh, but the company was smaller. The, the total long-term borrowing uh, from shareholders was 3.361. From non-current liabilities was 9.60. And so in percentage terms, how are we doing? 11.08 divided by a total of Four, three, two, one. 25.6%. So now we can draw a conclusion that certainly the profitability has improved. But I hope you see my point. Just saying it's gone from 1108 to 1896 on its own means nothing. But measuring how well uh, a company's being managed, it's the ratio that matters, that has gone up, it's good. Uh, one final thing on this one. Uh, the total long-term capital, um, depending on the information you give them, it is the um, money from share of the share capital and reserves plus the long-term borrowings. Uh, be clear, and this is right back to, I think, the second chapter, that will always be equal to the total assets, which in 2010, uh, 8771, minus the current liabilities. Current liabilities in 2010 were 2316. And the difference, 8771 minus 2316. Sorry. 8771 minus 2316 
is equal to 6455, which will always be the same as um, the equity plus the long-term borrowings, again, 6455. So it doesn't matter. I mean, it depends on the information you're given. You may be given a full statement of financial position, like here, or you may be just given bits of it. No problem. Okay, that's return on capital employed. Now, any company wants to increase that, but there are actually two ways you can increase it. One way would be to sell everything at a bigger profit. You know, if you make the same sales, but you're making more profit on all of them, uh, this would go up. The other way is to be more efficient and for the same size business to actually be able to sell more. And we can look at those two bits separately. The next one on my sheet is the net profit margin. Now here be careful, a lot of people get very angry about this. Normally, net profit is the very final profit, 2010, 11, 47. But when we're looking at ratio analysis as we are here, it always means net operating profit. For the same reasons as before, that uh, tax and interest uh, is not relevant really when you're looking at how well the managers are performing. Well, you've got your formula, the operating profit, again, 2010, the operating profit, the profit before interest and tax in 2010 is 1896. We calculate that as a percentage of the sales, the turnover, the revenue. And the total sales in 2010, the revenue, was 17,232. And so in percentage terms, eleven percent. Uh, what was it in two thousand and nine? Are we getting um, are we selling at a bigger profit or a lower profit? Uh, percentage. The profit for interest and tax was eleven zero eight. It's lower, but the revenue was lower. The revenue was thirteen thousand and forty four. So in percentage terms. It was 8.5%. Uh, so that's good. We're making a bigger profit margin. Again, it's no good just saying profit's gone up. You know, if, if sales have gone up, you want profit to go up. But we are making a, 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 a bigger percentage. I don't know how we're achieving it. Uh, it could be we're charging a higher price for things, or it could be because we've managed to cut costs. But either way, we're doing well. Uh, but again, on its own, those figures mean nothing. 11%, I can't tell you it's good or bad. It's only by comparing with similar companies or with last year. Uh, I did say that um, there were two ways we can increase the return on capital employed. Anybody wants to increase that? One way is to sell things at a bigger profit, and we are doing. We've just checked that, the net profit margin. The other way is to sell more for the size of the company. What I mean is, you see, if the company is twice as big, you expect to sell twice as many. But if you sold three times as many, then we're going to end up being more profitable. And so the next one is the asset turnover. And again, you've got the formula there. We look at the sales, the revenue. So in 2010, uh, the revenue was 17,232. And we divide by uh, the long-term capital in the company. Um, the money from shareholders, 5255, plus long-term borrowings, 1200. 
uh, the total finance in the company, the total long-term money in the company is, what, 6455. So the asset turnover is 17232 divided by 6455. Uh, 2.67 and this one we usually leave this as a number if you want 267 percent but it's normally just as a number the sales are 2.67 times what you might call the size of the company uh, what was it last year well in 2009 sales were lower 13044 but the company was smaller the uh, equity plus the long-term borrowing from the step to financial position, equity 3361, long-term borrowing 960, a total, and I don't forget, uh, 4321, which I think is 194, isn't it? Oh, well, I didn't write it down. Uh, anyway, let's divide uh, 13044. Sales divided by 4321 uh, gives me uh, 3.02. So here that's gone down a bit, um, which isn't as good, obviously. Ideally, we'd want both profit margin and asset turnover to increase. But I did say. Um, that these are the two different ways, the two different things that affect return on capital. And do be aware, and I've written it down, the return on capital employed is equal to the asset turnover times the profit margin. So just see what I mean. In 2010, asset turnover was 2.67, the profit margin was 11%. And so the return on capital employed 29.4%. Is that what I got? Yes, it is. Whereas in 2009, asset turnover was higher at 3.02, but the net profit margin uh, was lower at 8.5. The return on capital employed. Twenty five point seven per cent. Is that what I've got? Twenty five point six. I think it's just a rounding difference. Three point zero two times eight point five. Yeah, twenty five. It's just a rounding difference. I've kept everything to one decimal place. Uh, but fine. It's the two together. So as I was saying, you always want return on capital to increase, but you're looking at increasing the net profit margin and not here but in general you're looking to increase the asset turnover all right those are the three most important ones to be safe though uh, two others uh, first of all the gross profit margin you see our net profit margin increased but is it because we were charging our price is it because um, the cost of what we were selling has fallen, or we've cut the cost, or is it because we've saved on our expenses? Well, to narrow it down a little bit, the gross profit margin I don't think really this one needs learning, it should be fairly obvious. Uh, 2010, it's the gross profit, which in 2010 was 4308 as a percent of the uh, sales or the revenue, 17,232. In percentage terms, twenty-five percent. Obviously higher than the net profit margin. If you think about it, it must be. As always, on its own, that means nothing. I can't say whether that's good or whether it's bad. Compare with last year. Uh, gross profit lower at 2935, but the sales lower at 13044 as a percent. Twenty-five 
22.5%. So we have increased it, albeit only by a little bit, but it has gone up. Uh, the net profit margin increased a lot more, in fact, 8.5 up to 11. And so although um, gross profit, we're doing slightly better, maybe we've put the price up a little bit, or maybe the cost of the goods we're selling has gone down a little bit. Uh, but it does, the fact that it went up much less than the net profit margin went up means we have been cutting our expenses relatively, um, well, fine. Uh, finally, the least likely, to be honest, but I'll do it for completeness, the return on equity Equity, of course, is the shareholders, and the shareholders are, are going to be uh, very concerned over how much profit they're getting. Uh, and so, again, you've got the formula, but how much profit belongs to them? Well, it's a very final profit, 2010. The profit after tax is 1147. That belongs to them, unless as a preference dividend, equity is just the ordinary shareholders. So the profit that actually belongs to the ordinary shareholders is the final profit of 1147, less any dividend going to preference shareholders. Well, there's no preference here. So 1147 is the money belonging to the ordinary shareholders. Uh, we express it as a percentage of the shareholders' money, the capital plus reserves. So in percentage terms, 1147 divided by 5255, 21.8%. Whereas in the previous year, uh, profit after tax 637, share capital reserves 3361, and so as a percent. Uh, 19%. So if that's going to, in that sense, we'll be happy. Although I don't want to spend time on that. It's, if it's asked, it's asked. But for various reasons, it's much less likely uh, and less important. OK, so there are the profitability measures. Uh, in the next lecture, I'll go through the liquidity and the gearing measures. So I'll stop this one here, but next lecture we'll finish it.